Hey there guys, welcome to another episode of THP Tutorials. Once again, I am your host Seth, and in today's video, we'll be continuing with our series on management accounting. We'll be talking about decision making, you know, inside of an organization, decision making from the perspective of you know, management accounting. In the first week, we learned that what one of the use of management accounting was for decision making. And alongside planning and controlling, I so decision making. Now, outside an organization, when decisions are being made, they are made simply to either reduce the company's cost, you know, minimize cost, or to maximize profit, or to you know, increase the wealth of the firm for shareholders. That's that's right. So. In this video, particularly, we're talking about management and um, we're talking about the relevant cost of labor, right? Decision making regarding labor, right? So, when we say the relevant cost, it's simply referring to the items or should I say the cost units or cost elements which are relevant when you are making decisions about. Labor, right? There is relevant cost of materials, relevant cost of labor, relevant cost of supplies, so on and so on. Like, you know, any kind of cost that there is, there is a relevant cost for it. Very good. So, in this video, we're looking at how to go about you know, making decisions about labor, right? So, we'll talk a little about that when we come out from the intro and take a look at the trial question. So let's have our intro. So welcome back from the intro. Let's get right down to business, right? So look at the consideration criteria when making you know, decisions about the relevant cost of labor, right? So when you are making decisions about labor, you know, what are the things that you consider to be the relevant cost, right? So the criteria is three, right? And you is it has a lot to do with the existence or the absence of spare capacity. Now, spare capacity is simply referring to extra labor, right? If you wanted to embark on a new project in your firm and that project didn't require, that project required, let's say, 20 hours of labor, right? But already within the company, you have, let's say, five hours of labor that's unaccounted for, right? Nobody's the workers are not working during that time, and at the, at the end of the day, you should be paying them for that idle time, right? So that's what the capacity is when you have additional units or hours of labor that you know are idle, they are still idle, they're not being used for anything. That's what spare capacity means, right? So, when you're considering the relevant cost of labor, you, you really analyze you know, the presence or absence of spare capacity. So, the first criteria we talk about is when there is existence of spare capacity but additional units of labor is needed to complete the project right now let's say that you had five hours of spare capacity and the new project that you're going to take on required five hours as well right? then there will be no relevant cost of labor because you just use the spare capacity of five hours to do that new project right but now in a situation where the spare capacity is not enough so let's say you have the five hours of the spare cap uh, the five hours of labor you know as spare capacity and yet the project that you want to undertake will require you to have 10 hours of labor right so how would it, what would you compute as your relevant relevant cost of labor like what would be the figure when you're calculating your cost so in that instance, you know, in the instance where there is spare capacity, but additional units of labor is needed to complete, to complete the project, or when, when the spare capacity is not enough, the relevant cost of labor will be what? The difference between the required labor, you know, 
this, this is in hours, the capacity is also in hours, right? So they require labor minus the spare capacity, right? So in this, this situation, to be what? The 10 hours minus the 5 hours. The 10 hours being the required no hours that you need for your new project. And then the spare capacity is the hours that you have available that are sitting idle. So the difference between that times the labor cost per hour, that will give you your that that's how give the relevant your relevant cost of labor, right? So you subtract the spare capacity from the required hours, then you look at the additional unit that's left for you to hire, right? That's very simple. Now the second one is what? No spare capacity and labor must be hired from outside you know, the company to complete the project, right? Now this is looking at a situation where you no, know, you don't have spare capacity, right? All the labor that you have is being utilized. So there's no spare capacity in the company. So what would you do about that? In that instance, since you don't have any labor left, you would have to go outside of the company to hire more labor, right? So if you require the 10 hours of labor, in that instance, the relevant cost of labor will simply be the required hours of labor times the labor cost per hour, right? So when there's no, when there's no, no spare capacity, and you have to go and hire the worker outside from, outside from the company, it will be the required hours times the labor cost per hour, right? Now the first two criteria are you know, basically you know, very simple, right? And this, the third one is the relatively difficult one. So let's talk about that. Now the third instance is when there is no spare capacity and labor is in short supply, right? When there is no short, when there is no spare capacity and labor is in short supply. Now in this instance, it's saying that not only is it that you don't have you know, idle labor to do the new project, but the labor that you already have is not enough to do your current project, and yet you want to embark on a new project. So when you are calculating your relevant cost of labor, it will be what the required labor. No, no, it will be simply if I am to put this in words, it will be the the cost of you hiring the new or 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 the required labor out and the required labor. No, the new workers that they want to hire. It will be the cost of that, which is given by what? The required hour times the lab, uh, labor cost per hour, right? You will notice that this formula has been listed from here. So, in the question, when you saw, we'll get to you, but you can always use this instance, so just fix your figure over here. So, the required labor hour times the labor cost per hour, right? That will just be the cost of hiring the additional units or the hiring the new workers, right? But if you want to hire new workers and you are not going to use them for your existing projects which are already lacking um workers no you don't have enough labor for your ten projects and yet you're going to hire new workers to come and work on that uh on, 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 on new project then we we'll also calculate the opportunity cost of you not using that new labor for your current projects right because at the end of the day if you don't have enough labor to do that to, to do your current work to a degree you'll be incurring some degree of loss and to even add uh closing to the fire you are, you are going to hire new labor to what come and work on new projects the existing ones which need work so that's what the cost of hiring the new labor plus the opportunity cost of you not using them for your current new projects so mm, now the tough here, tough one here is what? The opportunity cost. How do we calculate it, right? And the opportunity cost is equal to what? The contribution per hour times the required labor hours, right? The contribution per hour times the required labor hours. That's how we compute for the opportunity cost, right? So at this point, we'll be taking a look at a trial question when we come up from the break, and you will see how to, you know, how give a, you know, more further guidance on how we show that one. No. And then we'll just come back to the board and write everything out. See you after the break. Alright, so let's start with the trial question. Right? Now, I have said that data limited is currently reviewing various proposals whether to undertake a new project. 
Our tenants will be required to successfully execute the projects to successfully execute their project, right? Now the company currently produces a product with a standard cost and selling price below. Right, so we have information about the cost and the selling price, right? We have the material that we have to provide some marginal cost and contribution per uh, unit, right, etc. Et so when I say standard cost, no, or when I say standard, it's referring to no per unit. Right? So the one that comes under the balance is the GHS are the per unit figures. Good. So what does this question require us to do? The first is to what? Calculate what the relevant cost of labor would be if labor must be hired outside the company. The second is what? What is the relevant cost of labor if the data limited expects to have four hours of set cost? And then the third is what is the relevant cost of labor if labor is in short supply? So you might be guessing now, you know, trying to, you know, um, find out what it was, right? So, how do you go about that? Now, I, I, the first thing to do in when solving questions like this is primarily to ask yourself which consideration criteria should you use, right? So, the answer is what? What is the relevant cost of labor if the labor must be hired from outside the company? Right. You see, it says what? If the labor must be hired from outside the company, if the labor must be hired from outside the company, it simply means that what? They don't want to take about it, right? So, the key idea is must. Right? Must. If you must do something, then it's more like you don't have a choice, right? And if they have to set up a policy, do not need to hire or you know, deliver from outside the work, right? So, this will fall under the second one, right? When there is no straight capacity and labor would need to be hired from outside the organization. So, we'll start in a second. Now, what is the relevant cost of labor if the, if the data, data limited express will have four hours of straight capacity? Right now, obviously, now we have four hours of set capacity, right? But the question is still that 10 hours of labor will be required. So, obviously, the four hours of set capacity would not be enough to complete the new projects, right? So, what happens now is that we use the, the first formula, right? The required labor hours on the, on the set capacity all multiplied by hours, the labor cost per hour. And the third one, obviously, which is obvious, when the relevant cost of labor What's the relevance of labor if labor is in short supply? Right? So that's the opportunity cost something. Now, if you remember the formula for the opportunity cost, is contribution per hour multiplied by what the required hours. So the question that we must ask ourselves is this What is the, you know, the contribution per hour? Or how do we find the contribution per hour? Because it's not given a question, right? The contribution you are seeing in the question. Right under the marginal cost, you know, in the standard cost items is what? Contribution per unit. So how do you find contribution per hour? Where well, the formula is simply what? Contribution per unit divided by um, the bar hours, right? So how do you find the labor hours? Look at the next labor package, right? The labor hours is four hours. So the four hours is divided by the labor hours. Now the next labor cost per hour is not the 40 that uh, the total that are seen, you know, at the balance the column is actually a three, right? The twelve is there because the question is telling us that we will need four hours of labor to produce one unit of the product, right? And each hour is um, cost three uh, three dollars. So if it takes one uh, if it takes four hours to produce one unit of the one out, four times three will give us the cost per unit. So that's why the twelve is over there. But the labor cost per hour is actually three dollars. And then four hours is the labor hours. And the required hours in the was ten. And what else do we need? What else do we need? 
for lawyer and special capacity to start others. So now let's go back to the white board and solve this question. So we are after the break, a short break, right? <laughs> Alright, so let's start solving the question, right? So, the first one I thought, what was the relevant cost of labor if labor must be high from outside the company, right? So that's the second one. So, what's the formula for that one? So, I will got the relevant cost of labor will be equal to what? The required hours or the required labor hours. What's that by what? The labor cost there are. The question the required hours was, was 10. And then the labor cost per hour was 10, right? So, so in the first instance, the relevant cost of labor will be 30. Certain instance, what happened? You ran out. The. Yeah. Right. So, in this instance, the spare capacity, what was the, what was the spare capacity? The, the company expected to have four hours of spare capacity, right? But they required this uh, labor hour system. So, that's find a difference. So to do what? The required labor, I'm not doing it in short, right? But the spare capacity. Multiply by what the labor cost per hour. It becomes 10 minus 4. Multiply by 3. Right? This becomes 6 times 3. It becomes what? 18 ounces. This one is the more difficult one, right? But remember what I said that we will just leave this answer. So in actuality, no, 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 not this one. The first one that will lift. We leave this one, right? So when there is no spare capacity. The labor is just supply to do what? RL multiplied by what? Labor cost per hour plus the opportunity cost. So now I have to sign for the opportunity cost, right? Opportunity cost is equal to what? The contribution. Per unit, no per hour, multiplied by what? Required hours. Anyway, I ask for this one. This one is ten. You already know this one. So the contribution per hour will be equal to what? The contribution per unit. Divided by the hours per unit. It becomes 9 divided by 4 on the question. You give you 2.25 hours. Right. So this times 10 to get a contribution per hour. So the contribution per hour. Times 10. So the opportunity cost is equal to what? This times 10. Once they write, so it becomes 22.5. Yeah. So I'm going to ask it. Ask it because it's contribution, right? So this was 30. This is what? Um, 10 times 3. So it's 30. So we are looking for the relevant cost of labor when there is no spare capacity and labor is essential supply. If you want the cost of hiring the labor 
rather the opportunity cost of not using them for the existing project. This one is 2.5. They got what? 52.5. Run out this. Right. That's basically it for the relevant cost of labor. See you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click a like, and share, and help us get to 500 subscribers. Big five. Thank you very much.